everyone i hope everybody's doing well blessed and enjoying family and as always to allow me to start off by thanking everybody for your guys' words prayers and your amazing support from the heart do know i appreciate every single one of you now for today this is part of my story in a sense but if i move forward and backwards and it seems like i'm jumping back and forth Please just follow along with me. It, it actually touched three different stages in my story, but I do want to get this camarada story out there. And so I want to touch on it. And on the next chapter, I will continue off on my story on the last incident that I personally was involved in Ironwood before I got transferred to Tehachapi Okay, for this story, I want to touch on. On the Pili, David Fierro from Fontana, or Big D, however people know him. And a good camarada that I happened to run across, uh, GQ from Isa Victoria. Now, GQ, when we're, we were back there in, in the hole in Ironwood, is when we started chopping it up with one another. And uh, I liked the estilo. You know, he had uh, expectations for himself in the sense that his goal was to become a member. He... He literally, that's what he was striving for, right? But at the same time, he wasn't one of them, you know, you couldn't hold a conversation with or, or was down to earth. He was cool to, to every sense. If he would have took the proper steps, you know, he could have gotten in there if things were always gray or black, right? But there never are. But anyways, we're in the same group yard in Ironwood in the whole. And he was one of the workout partners that I had out there. And he was, a, again, a good camarada in the sense that, you know, we were able to s just stand around out there and just exchange exchange conversations back and forth that had different aspects in life. It wasn't just prison-wise or Billy-wise or, you know, the typical high-power conversations that some hold in prison. We had conversation in different angles. Now the opportunity up rose on the yard that, uh, well, there was this vato that he was, uh, he was a real dirty vato, right? And, uh, he had to get chin checked. There was nothing like with fierros or nothing than that. As I mentioned before, maybe the story right before on my storyline that I just told the last one before Kali, you know, I was on management cell and I was on walk alone and it had to do with this individual. You know, even though I had the yard, I had the hole, I would always request a camarada to, to boogie with me, but you know, I would never walk a camarada into something without walking in with him because things are tricky. You know, by this time I'm starting to get a little bit of tooth when it came to politics. And I understand that if you're under the wing of a Billy, you might be able to wiggle through things, but uh, sometimes the people you send to do things, you're basically throwing them into a wolf's cave. So anyways, I don't like to do that. You know, I never been scared of a little butt whoop or a little bit of egg to uh, to meet the goal. So this other camarada, you know, I'm not even going to put him on blast like that, but he was going out the yard with us and he was straight up cochino. He was dirty. You know, he had like showered, all his cellies always had wanted to move because he was dirty in the cell, no respect. And it was just a, a repeated thing, always talking to him and wanting for him to correct his way because uh, one thing's being on the linea one way, another thing's in the in the hole, right? You have to always be suit up, boot up, and, and ready to program. And you have to have a program because we're back there, right? So when the time came by, uh, you know, it was discussed amongst us and uh, GQ said uh, that he would go ahead and do it, right? So I told him, all right, feed me. The next hour we come out and we go ahead and we just we just give him a couple of coscorones and, and either get right. And if not, the next time, then 
some steel, you know, or whatever, you know, his chicada is going to be different. So everything went down to dot, you know, for those that were in Ironwood, there was two hudas back there that they seen that things went down accordingly to the ones that we had the keys to the plane back there. So everything went down as planned, you know, we got him in the corner, we went and go ahead and just gave him a little bit of matapiojos and we straight told him, you know, what it was about. It's either check himself or next time it wasn't going to be that easy, right? So anyways, just fast forwarding a little bit. Within time, uh, you guys know the Cali exit and then one, I'm going to continue on my story, continuing uh, to continue telling, excuse me, and uh, I eventually got transferred to Tehachapi Shoe. As you guys know, you know, I got there and uh, T had the keys, you know, from Kuka uh, of all seven block, but he was in B section right, right above me. So everything was cool. You know, once I made it out to the group yard, within what, two, three weeks, the homie drove up right to the shoe. He was in C section, but nevertheless, we were the group yard that we were in seven block that weren't validated, right, at this time. So we're going out together and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that you actually click with the camarada, right? I don't know if I'm making sense, but uh, it's real rare that you're able to, to be happy to see another camarada, right, or run across them, which I was, to be sincere, you know, and, uh, to see GQ out there, it was it was cool. It was Feedness. He's a good homie again. And, uh, you know, things unfolded, as I will get into, but... Just to touch, to make sense of things. There was a, a camarada, right? That within time, uh, he had had multiple cellies. And with all his cellies, he had problems. So, you know, T had asked me uh, if I could do him the favor, go up in there, you know, measure him, see where he's at. And uh, if I see him, that uh, he was just causing poison amongst us, then go ahead and, well, you guys know. So things happen. And of course, you know, I asked if, if Dulce Duro or... Just a zapateado, right? So he said, nah, just zapateado. And by then, we'll let another camarada, you know, I will hate for him to move you from, from seven block. So just a zapateado and then I'll take care for him. I just want you to go up in there and really measure the cat. So I went up in there and uh, sure enough, it was him. You know, he had some, some messed up habits to the point where he thought he, uh, he could have something happening in his personal life. And it could reflect it on the celly, if you guys get what I'm trying to say. So the first time that I was up on my bunk, and I don't know what went up, you know, his boxer or his butt crack, whatever, you know. But he tried to snap at me, no butts or ribs, you know. I jumped down, and he had a couple piojos on him, so, you know, I helped him out with them. So that unfolded, you know, they came in, took us out, and all that little little dilemma they do when when something happens and after that happened they didn't took our double cell status so T asked me you know who I wanted to bring over so right away I told him about the camarada and I had them I had the CEO Luna bring him over you know that he was really he was really like that would kiss butt to to T right so he did it for us and I got to meet the camarada a lot more in a personal level right before it was a yard thing, it was cotorreo, you know, sharing stories about what would be cool to do and, and things like that. Now in the cell, it was more on a family trip, you know, he had kids, a wife, his expectations for him, what, you know, just personal level like that. And again, the camarada, he, his expectation was to become somebody. For a long time, he was doing things for a joker from his, from his neighborhood, right? And uh, he wanted, he was in the understanding, as everyone should be, right? Because there's certain people that have gotten on here and they're a thousand percent right. It ain't about you being a torpedo. It ain't about you being able to pull missions, clip someone, you know. Uh, it's about bringing things to the table as a whole. So he was in this understanding, you know, you can't just be a soldado and expect the doors to open up. There's other angles to address to when it comes to reaching out reaching that high right well at least at this time where you had the carnales in the in the shoe you had a more of an open opportunity to, to earn those stripes and uh anyways we did this and uh, within time i got kicked out to the 180 and uh i lasted two weeks as i have already told this uh came right back right well i came to 
A block lasted there about two weeks and came right back to B section. And then by this time, uh, GQ was already gone. He had gotten kicked out to the mainline. Nevertheless, though, he was short time in it. You no, know? he didn't have too much time. And uh, the last conversation we had, the camarada told me that if he got out there and saw things like real hectic due to the the issue Joker was going through at this time, as I will touch on in the future, that uh he was gonna chill, do his family thing. You know, he went in, did his twelve dollars, did what he had to do wherever he landed. You know, if he got out there and seen doors weren't gonna be open, he was concent- con- concentrated on his kids and his familia, right? Which that should have been his number one priority. But again, when we're in that in that life, our mind plays games with us. What we're to consider. As first and foremost, we put it in second base for the lifestyle we're, we're misled to be loyal to, to the bone. Especially if it comes to that extent, you know, where all you want is to become a member. But, you know, fast forwarding, I disculpen, I don't really like to do this, but time went by. I did my thing, got moved to Corcoran, things unfolded there, got validated. Beat it, went to Salinas, came back, then I got revalidated, and I was about to get kicked out to Folsom, and, uh, and I just never did, you know, because they came back with the packet, which I will touch on, you know, my second validation, they stuck. There was no way around it, as I would tell you guys. But, uh, anyways, within time, I hit Pelican Bay, and when I hit Pelican Bay, uh, I ain't gonna lie to you guys, you know, uh, amongst them, it was well known that my family could get that, that candy, right? So D from Fontana approached me and he told me he wanted to start getting certain type of jale and uh, if I could get prices for me. Now, I was aware that I had made the mistake, right? That I said right away, Simon, without implementing that it was a favor. That it was, you know, I will put you in touch from then on. Yes, you know, I don't want nothing. I want to connect you with the good people. And from then on, you know, you guys do you. I just went ahead and I had freshly arrived, you know, to the bay. So I had a lot of things hanging on me from the incident in Corcoran. So anyways, things unfolded, you know. Of course, I gave him the prices. It was a certain price in TJ and it was a certain price in Fontana, right? Or in the, in the IE. And uh, the first one, two, yeah, it was one or two times. They were in IE, and uh, after that, he said he had put together a crew, and they were going to start doing that, that drive, that how much would it be for the Rafla to be ready just for certain individuals just to get the Uber and say they're coming back to do a smoke control because they're thinking of buying it and uh, get it over and get the holler over. So it was the amount of the Rafla. The work was uh, was a given from from my family saying and uh and the holiday right that they were requesting so again once everything unfolded uh to my surprise one of the homies helping him was the homie gq don't know how don't know if after joker uh he got in touch with d to support or i i would be lying to you guys if i told you that uh that i knew exactly how that they touch base right but all i know that is it had already been what six seven years since the last time I had seen the camarada in Tehachapi. So something must have gone wrong. I don't know if he went back in to do a little term. Again, I would be lying to you guys. But nevertheless, he was there, right? He was there supporting D from, from Fontana now. And the other camarada was uh, Moscow from Fontana that were going down there with family, doing their little, you know, traveling in TJ, then coming back. And, and it worked out a few times. Now within, uh, I don't know, you know, time lapse. But within time, uh, D got at me and he told me that if I thought it was correct to get on my family, you know, see if they pay for 20, they were able to touch another 20 for 20 day period, right? Which I told him I don't, I didn't know about that, right? Cause, uh, my family was real strict on, uh, on, uh, dando y dando, right? You give to receive. <clears throat> so nevertheless, you know, again, I stuck my foot in my mouth. I did things that I knew they weren't correct for so many reasons, but I spoke for this individual when he came and I told him and uh, they asked me straight up, you know, when I had a prima visit and asked me straight up, hey, and tuke, what would your decision be? And I straight told him, 
not all 20, you know, have him pay for 20 and this, and then we'll, it'll be like a one-time thing, you know, so it was carved on stone like that, right, basically, if he was able to get the Fed up for 30, they were, they would 10, just in case, because a lot of things could happen, you know, not everything is, is sugar-coated to the point where it's going to go flawless, so these said Simon, so it went down to that, and uh, the camaradas, their families, they went down to TJ as they had before, and uh, for those that have been out to TJ, TJ is wild. TJ is in his ghetto. There's everything in TJ. And then angels, homies, cartels, there's also people doing their thing, right? So somehow, some way they got they got word of, you know, the Uber and uh, how it had a little bit extra weight on, on it than it should. And the camarada and their families, they got jacked straight up. To what extent, I don't know, but have I known they pull you out, they lay everybody down and ain't nobody going to say anything in Mexico, right? So word came back around and uh, you guys can imagine, he was furious. He was real furious. He literally gave GQ and the other camarada exactly that, 20 days to make sure they came up with all the feria. And GQ went back to what, knowing what he knew what to do was pulling licks. Making Fedia quick like that, and uh, and one of them he got caught, so they went to county and they didn't have very much left to pay off, but uh, somehow, some way, they managed to pull through and pay it off. Now, this is as much as understanding, love, and care these guys have when it comes to camaradas that are loyal to them, that are going out and beyond for them. These camaradas are on the calles, they're going over that border to please this individual with their families, putting them in the, the line of fire, because let's be sincere, TJ, it's not. One, is many. They catch when you're doing things for certain individuals, they're going to take you out with your whole family. TJ's known for that. Darellanos are known for trash things like that, you know. Kids, family, it don't matter. But the camaradas are willing to do that to please this individual. Then he comes back after it wasn't his fault. Everybody that wiggles in that lifestyle knows that, you know, when you're pushing work, there's always losses. So you're to expect them and be ready to chalk those up. But again, this type of hand that they're on top of the world, right? It could only happen to other people, especially when they have people they could they could have pay to the fullest. So when they completed paying D, he ended up taking their career. To what extent, you know, after I heard from this individual that they were paid off and he was going to put a hole on think that he didn't have a crew no more. So of course I asked because I never brought up our back history with GQ, but uh, I asked him what you mean. So when they got busted and uh, to be sincere, once they fall, they ain't, they ain't used to me no more. So I had them relieve that space for a different camarada. I took them out the program. They weren't able to complete my mission. So, you know, I feel bad because uh, I knew firsthand from years from this individual that all he wanted to do was please these type of people. But again, which one you get involved with, it's a guessing game, you know. At the end of the day, the house never loses. They expect you to do things to the thought. And this is the times where they truly needed camaradas because they were slammed. But it just goes to show how they have those Tecato ways that they were never beaten or taken out of them. You know, speaking about the camarada, I don't know where it's at. Don't know what has happened with him, but uh, he should have known better. Because even for years, I knew that D was uh, busted for being a big old Tecato, straight up. And that uh, even if he had changed some of his ways, that don't go away. It ain't a gripa, right? But he didn't, you know. His eager to please these people to get in their inner circle and when it was actually possible for a camarada to reach that, it just never happened, you know, because uh, they will never be considerate when it comes to Sureños, camaradas, or what you do. Again, everything moves from the RTR. Every individual is different. What you do for one individual could touch a wrong nerve with a different one and it'll mean nothing. So don't allow people to paint it as, you know, it's a walk in the park. It's something you must do. The only thing you must do is, is value your life. Value what's really there to value. You know, be true to those you start with. And if that takes you down the path to, to go inside, then, you know, comes with the territory. I'm not asking nobody to, to go out, but 
first in no sense of the word but if you're able always keep an eye on the main goal which is you and your loved ones this is a perfect example how it's just misled lies and there ain't nothing there especially now but anyways mi gente i just thought i'd share this story about the homie from isa victoria and uh, how he traveled through the years doing things right even when he had a, got out and had a chance to please his family he chose to keep pleasing this individual because it's what he felt in heart was right it's what we're ingrained to believe is the right thing to do it backfired because you know when it comes to beliefs there's always room for error they could always make mistakes right i mean look analyze things but when it comes to uh, camarada campolero you're doomed if you do and you're doomed if you don't so be wise stay true to yourself and loyal to your loved ones i send my love muy buenas noches <laughs>